Today's video is simple and straight to the point. We are not a guard away. What's good, people? It's your boy, Mr. Room. Cowboys fan talk right back like I never left. I'm back, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Birthday was great. Um, doing some more celebrating this weekend, man. And before I do anything else today, man, I want to say thank you to everybody. All the calls, tweets, texts, DMs, etc. Thank you. Um, I had some people send me some some cash apps, and look, I I can't I can't not say thank you personally to those people. I'm going to just say. Um, just going to say um, some last names or first names. Just so I don't want people looking up people. But I appreciate y'all, man. Shout out to Rodney. Um, you know who you are for sending me the cash app. Shout out to Mr. Canada. Um, I appreciate you, um, Mr. Canada. Um, I appreciate that, that love. Shout out to Lyle. Thank you. Thank you for the cash app. Shout out to Leticia. Thank you for the cash app. And look, if you ain't seen the cash app, I'm not tripping. I'm just wanting to definitely say thank you to them people personally. I ain't want to say first and last name because I don't want people looking up people and it getting creepy. But thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Seriously. Um, today, man, I wanted to talk about guard, man. The hot button topic in Cowboys Nation is we have to go guard. No matter what, I don't care if Ray Lewis on the board. I don't care if Randy Moss on the board. I don't care what player's there. You go guard. You don't care. You just move on. No. That is stupid. Very stupid. Even one of the people that supports the offensive line more than almost everybody I know on YouTube. Vach Lombardi says, he is a Kenyon Green fan, and so am I. But he also has like four other players that if they're there, he's taking them, and he's not looking back. Shout out to Vach. Um, shout out to anybody else that believes what I'm saying. Because there's a lot of people that's in my boat. Everyone thinks that, yes, Mr. If, if I got my, my choice, I want George Pickens, Traylon Burks. Give me a weapon. I want a weapon. I want to continue doing what we do. Call me crazy. Fine. But I also want George Karloftis. I'll take N'Kobe Dean. Obviously, I'll take Jordan Davis. I ain't crazy. You know, if everyone's gone and it's the doomsday scenario that I did in the video before, then you can take Kenyon Green. But what if he's gone? What if Zion Johnson's gone? And this whole argument of take guard anyway, you ain't going to go to a second round guard. So stop forcing yourself to take the best player available because that's what you do. But I got some things to back it up. We're not a guard away because guard wasn't our biggest issue last year. And I'll put numbers on the screen to prove it. Um, if you look at our, our, our um, offensive line last year, Zach Martin accounted – Pardon me while I read. Zach Martin accounted for two sacks, six QB hits, 15 hurries, 23 pressures. That's all pro Zach Martin. McGovern, one sack, three QB hits, 12 hurries, 16 pressures. Now, that's a little worse because he didn't play nearly as much. So, yes, McGovern did struggle when he played left guard. He played really well at right guard in the first game. And remember, he played in the first game because Zach Martin had COVID. People forget about that. Um, offensive tackles, Tyron Smith, three sacks for the entire year, five QB hits, nine hurries, 17 pressures. You feel me? Lyle Collins, two sacks, zero hits, 18 hurries, 20 pressures. Now check this out. You go back to Williams. If you look at that, Connor Williams was not far off from everybody else in the guard area. If you look at Steele. Two sacks, five QB hits, 24 Harrys, 31 pressures. Now, Steele has way more pressures, but a lot of those pressures came when you forced Steele because Steele had to bounce around the line, meaning he had to adjust. He played right tackle and left tackle. Remember that. So some of those pressures and hurries from Steele, I think, came from the left side. My point is, and Beatish, I'm sorry, one sack, four QB hits, 17 hurries, 22 pressures. What do I see across the board? Pretty much everyone. There's no one. Even Zach Martin and Ty Smith, who are a little bit better than everybody else. Everyone gave up multiple pressures, multiple QB hits, and sacks across the board. 
It wasn't just Connor Williams is the weak link. The entire line struggled at moments. They had good stretches and bad stretches. Now, if you're wondering, okay, but the other teams, I'll throw some other teams on the board for you. And shout out to Professor O. If y'all don't know Professor O on Twitter, y'all need to go find out. He's the one, Matt Owen, Professor O, he's the one that got me this information. I appreciate him. I can't go further without shouting him out. Appreciate you, Professor O. Um, if you go back and you look at, hold on, bear me for a second. I'll put it on the screen. Look at Tampa Bay. Right? Tampa Bay. Look at Worth's sack total. Three sacks. Look at his pressures. Look at D. Smith. Look at their guards. Look at Marpet. Look at Kappa. 43 hurries, 15 pressures. Look at that. D. Smith, the Tampa Bay offensive tackles. One person has 43 pressures. Tampa Bay is supposed to have one of the best offensive lines in the league. This is before the hurt. This is before they got hurt up in the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Worth's played great. Um, Kappa. Alex Kappa, if you look at his pressures, he got more pressures than Beatish. Beatish played the whole year. Right? I'm just saying. Jansen is, is like an all-pro center. He got 27 pressures. He got more pressures than Beatish. He gave up four sacks. And y'all ready to throw Beatish in the trash? I'm just saying, man. You can even look at the Rams line. Another line that's supposed to be incredible. I see 41 pressures here. I see 41 pressures there. 30 pressures. Multi six sacks, seven sacks, seven sacks, three sacks, five sacks by the center. Center was worse than Beatish as well. My point is this. We need offensive line. We also need an offensive line coach that can do his job. That's pretty much the main thing. Philbin got to get to work. Because even McGovern, as bad as he was, is right on par with a lot of the offensive line in the league. If you don't know, a lot of offensive linemen are terrible. But even some of the greats have bad moments. I just ran down and showed you all of the pressures, all of the sacks that some of the top lines in the league are giving up. Now, it's different than pay attention to that because you're not watching those games. So one sack in Dallas counts for like 10 in your mind. But at the end of the day, our line played pretty well. Pretty well. Now, you can do all you want to do. You can say that's an indictment on Dak. That's a whole other conversation. You can just say that all of the line shuffling, the penalties, because um, that's a big problem. We had a lot of discipline problems. We had line shuffling problems where the front office was making people play certain linemen in certain places. We had suspensions. We had COVID issues. We had Ty Smith getting hurt. A lot of movement on our line, which made our line look worse at parts. But overall, we just need better coaching, better discipline, and our line will be fine. Because if you roll out there with four great offensive linemen, or you got a decent one in Beatish, he's decent, whether you want to realize it or not. You maybe have a weak link in McGovern. You got a great one in Ty Smith. You got an amazing one in, in Zach Martin. And you got an amazing one on the rise in Terrence Steele. Our line would be just fine. Would be just fine. Everyone needs to chill out. Stop freaking out and say, we got to go guard. No, we don't. If we get Kenyon Green, I'll say this first. I will be happy. He's not a horrible player. But if we get Kenyon Green and leave Karloftis on the board, we leave Traylon Burks on the board, Pickens on the board, N'Kobe Dean on the board, I'm going to be tight. Or Jordan Davis. Because you take the best player available. And whenever the last time we did this, the last time we went ahead and forced it, we got Taco Charlton. And he is bun diddles. Trinity dash. Weakness on display. I don't want that. I want a plug and play player, not a plug and play guard. So everyone that's team guard, stop lying to yourself. And saying that I don't care who's on the board, I'm taking a guard. Because we are not a guard away. If you want to argue about it, let me know in the comments. But I feel like, I feel like the facts speak for themselves. It's your boy, Mr. Rome, man. Facts over feelings. I'll holler.